Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Juan Souza and in this video I want to show you a really quick and simple way to block out hands. So if you have watched one of my previous videos, there is one where I show you how to use IMM fingers, which is a brush I created to, to speed up the process of blocking out the fingers. But honestly, I don't use that brush uh, very much and the reason is that I'm I'm still very new to ZBrush and sculpting characters so I rather start my characters completely from scratch and keep on improving my skills as much as possible and personally I think that hands are one of the most difficult body parts to get it right the more time I spend blocking out hands or sculpting hands, the, the more I improve. The first thing to do is visualize the hand as it was built with primitive shapes and the hand as a very squared shape. Here you can see me using a sphere to shape the hand and I personally use a sphere because it gives me a more organic look instantly. And looking at the hand from the top view, or what it's called the dorsum, there is a curve that you should look out for at this stage, and that's the area where the fingers attach to the hand. This curve starts from the index knuckle and goes pretty much like a straight line until it reaches the middle knuckle. And from there, it starts dropping all the way down to the pinky knuckle. So basically the peak of this curve is at the middle knuckle. The same thing happens from the front view. It's pretty much the same curve where the peak is at the middle knuckle. And this is especially important if you are sculpting a hand that is relaxed. And when you relax your hand, it creates that natural curve that I'm talking about. I also want to mention that at this stage I like to create a ramp where all the fingers attach to the hand and from the side view you can clearly see that the cross line between the fingers and the hand create this diagonal line and this basically shows you that the palm of the hand is longer than the dorsum an interesting fact is that in most cases the middle finger has the same length as the hand and you should measure the fingers from the tip up to the knuckles. For the fingers I like to create a separate subtool and work on this object with symmetry turned on for as long as possible. The finger itself is pretty symmetrical so working with symmetry helps you to speed up this process. As I said before, I start by checking out the proportions and see if the middle finger, which is the one I'm sculpting now, is the same length as the hand. And then it's just a matter of dividing in different polygroups according to where each phalange is. The biggest difference in your fingers is that the thumb is the only that has only two phalanges. All the other four have three phalanges. The first one, which is called the proximal, is the longest, and then you have the intermediate phalange, and for last, the shortest phalange is called the distal phalange. And the process to find all the phalanges is pretty straightforward. You just have to split this object into two equal parts and that's how you find the the length of the proximal phalange then you you divide into two equal parts once again and that's how you find the other two phalanges
And now that I'm done sculpting the finger, I duplicate it and start placing and scaling down each one, one at a time. And since I'm sculpting a relaxed hand pose, all the fingers are a, a bit spreaded, they are not exactly parallel to each other, and they are all pointing to the wrist. Now moving on for the thumb, you may have noticed that the way that attaches to the hand is a bit different, is a bit more complex. But first of all, there are just two phalanges, as I mentioned, the proximal and the distal phalanges. The metacarpal bone of the thumb, which is the bone that connects the proximal phalange to the wrist bones, also called the carpal bones, is also covered by two muscles that create one of the two big bulges on the hand. These muscles are the flexor pollicis brevis and the abductor pollicis brevis. And for last, the thumb is perpendicular to the other fingers almost 90 degrees. The second big bulge that is located on the opposite side is created by the muscles of the pinky the flexor digiti minimi and the abductor digiti minimi. And again, with the thumb, I try to work with symmetry turned on for as long as possible. And the thumb is a little bit larger than all the other fingers. And finally, for last, when I'm done sculpting the thumb, I place it correctly using the 90 degrees angle that I've mentioned before, because the thumb works perpendicular to all the other fingers. And then I rotate around 45 degrees down so that the thumb looks more relaxed. And that's it for blocking out the hand. I hope you find this video useful on your future projects. And I see you on the next one.